Hi, welcome to Grace River Online at Home. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you've joined us. If this is your first time, I wanna encourage you to text the word first to the number on the screen. We'd love to reach out and just say thanks for stopping by. I'm excited for what God has in store for us today. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris. I'm lead pastor here at Grace River Church. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching church online at home. You know, it says a lot about who you are that you take some time out of your busy weekend or busy day uh, and learn more about your relationship with God. And man, I, I hope that there's some really clear next steps for you in this teaching. And so we're in the middle of a series right now, right now called Asking for a Friend. And the topic that we're going to cover today is this, is Jesus really the only way to God? And so I get this question a lot as a pastor. And so people will talk to me about different faith systems. And the question that is often asked is, is Jesus really the only way to God? And you know, well, what a lot of people, a good illustration that I like to use is a lot of people will look at one of these kind of Coke machines. I love soda, just so you know. Like, I've kind of like, I haven't completely given it up. I don't drink near as much soda as I used to. But let's just face it, man, soda is so good. If you don't think soda is good, I don't even know if you're going to heaven. I'm kidding, you're going to heaven if you think soda is bad. But seriously, soda is delicious. Uh, I grew up on Coke and Dr. Pepper, like I love it. But whenever I am at a restaurant and the restaurant has one of these machines, I almost always get a soda because it's undeniably cool. Like I'm just like, man, that is so awesome because I actually Googled this. When you see a machine like this, it means that there are 127 different soda options. I mean, just with Coke alone, you have like Coke and Coke Vanilla and Coke Cherry and Diet Coke and Coke Zero and you know all these different Cokes and it's like, man, it's so confusing. The same with Dr. Pepper, I'm a big Dr. Pepper guy. And so there's all these different flavors of Dr. Pepper and it's really confusing. And so what I end up doing, even though there's all these options, I end up still getting regular Coke or regular Dr. Pepper. I don't ever experiment with it. Every once in a while, I'll take a sip of one of my kids' drinks. and I'll be like, what is that disgusting? They're like, it's vanilla Dr. Pepper, which happens to be absolutely disgusting. And so uh, we can argue about it later in person, but, but seriously, totally gross. I'm more of a Dr. Pepper guy. In fact, if you're watching, just put it in your comments uh, what your favorite type of soda is. That would be really helpful for us uh, and just kind of a fun sociological experiment, right? But when you see a machine like this, your automatic draw is, oh, dude, I should totally just, you know, get something really crazy. Like I should get orange Fanta with vanilla flavor in it. But the reality is you always end up, at least with me, I always end up getting the same old thing. And so when it comes to this illustration, though, a lot of people would say, well, isn't Islam just like Christianity? And isn't Hinduism just like Christianity? And isn't Mormonism just like Christianity? And the reality is, no. It's not just all Coke, right? You could easily go, well, it's just all sugar water, right? Uh, but there is a vast difference uh, between Islam and Christianity, between Buddhism and Christianity. And so uh, Islam actually believes that Jesus did not die on the cross. Hindus actually believe uh, that Jesus was reincarnated to a higher caste system when he died. Christi Christians believe that when Jesus died, he borrowed a tomb for three days, and that's why we're still talking about him today. The one thing that sets Christianity apart from every other worldwide religion is this, is that Jesus did not stay dead. Every one of the other worldwide religious leaders, when they died, they did not resurrect. There is power behind this because the reason why this is so powerful is dead people are intended to stay dead. Our God, our Messiah, our Savior is still alive today because he borrowed a tomb for three days. And so the Bible's pretty specific and helps us to understand that there is a difference between Christianity and every other worldwide religion. There are, are 4,500 worldwide religions, uh, but the one thing that separates Christianity from all of the rest is that our leader, when he died, he did not stay dead. John 14, verse 16 says this. Jesus was talking, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus didn't say that he was a way. What did he say here? He said he was the way. Jesus is the way. There isn't multiple options. There isn't multiple ways to God. There is one way to God. And some would say that that is it, it, that, that it's not tolerant, that it's intolerant for us to live like that. 
or some would say that's a very exclusive religion. It's not exclusive because it's for everyone. It's actually very inclusive, okay? Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 2 says this, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. It's only by the name of Jesus, only by the person of Jesus that you and I could ever be made right with God, that we could ever be reconciled. Uh, Every single one of us have done things in our lives that we're guilty of, that we're ashamed of, that we feel regret about. And what's incredible about the good news about Jesus is this, is that Jesus came, the prerequisite for us needing him is our brokenness. Jesus came uh, to satisfy all of the guilt, all of the shame, uh, everything in our lives that we're not proud of. Jesus came for all of those things. So there's three distinct ways that Christianity is unique to every other worldwide religion. And the first way is this, is, the, is this concept of grace. You and I, we don't get what we deserve. And in Christianity, we get this thing called grace. God came to us in our sinful state. God came to us in our brokenness. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to achieve it. All we have to do is simply believe and receive that God came for us. Look at this in Romans chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us in sending Christ Jesus to die for us while we were still sinners. You know what's amazing about God's grace is that even when we were running the opposite direction away from God, he sent his only son to come and die for us. Isn't that crazy? Like, You and I did not deserve God's love, but he gave it to us anyways, and that is called grace. 71% of Americans believe that they can contribute to their own salvation. And what I want you to know is is this, is that you and I can contribute nothing to our own salvation. The good news of the gospel is not something that we achieve. It's something that we believe and receive. So stop making it about achievement. Achievement is religious activity. Religion is, I got to do better, I got to try harder. What grace is, is this, is it's simply me believing and receiving what God has already done for me. It's like running in a marathon and not being able to finish. If I tried to run in a marathon, there is absolutely no way I could make it across the finish line myself. What grace does is this, is grace helps us cross the finish line ourselves. Grace actually brings the finish line to us. And so I wonder today, man, are you a person of grace or are you a person that's trying to achieve God's God's right standing. Are you a person that's trying to achieve good favor with God? So uh, one way that Christianity is different than every other worldwide religion is grace. That's one way. The the second distinct way that makes Christianity so much different is the resurrection. I mentioned this earlier, but our worldwide leader did not stay dead, which is totally crazy. The resurrection separates Christianity from every other worldwide religion because Of the 4,500 worldwide religions out there, um, Christianity is the only one that not only makes the claim uh, that their worldwide leader resurrected, but he actually did. There's actually historical accounts outside of the Bible uh, that help us to understand that the resurrection actually did happen. Now, some would say that the 12 disciples made it up, that there is no way that he actually resurrected. Others would say that they were simply hallucinating. Uh, But what's incredible is there's actually accounts in the Bible of 500 people at one time seeing a resurrected Jesus, which scientifically, 500 people can't hallucinate. He really did resurrect. It really did happen. But the proof of the resurrection for me happens whenever we see the life change of the disciples. If you do a little bit of a character study on the disciples after Jesus dies on the cross, They're afraid and they're scared, and many of them went back to their day jobs. Many of them went into hiding because they were scared of what was going to happen to them because their leader had just been crucified, and they're kind of like doing the math, and they're thinking that's going to happen to us too. But after they see a resurrected Jesus, Jesus comes and visits them behind closed doors because they were scared. And then Jesus actually ascends into heaven after that, after giving them some marching orders to go and make disciples all over the world. And all of a sudden... These, these cowards that were so scared end up being courageous. In fact, uh, 11 of the 12 disciples end up dying similar deaths to Jesus. If I am making up a story, I'm not going to die for that story. I'm just not. But the 12 disciples, 11 of the 12 of them actually die, like I mentioned, very similar deaths to Jesus. Here's some examples of some. So James was pushed off the Temple Mount and killed. 
Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't think it would be fitting for him to die the same exact way that Jesus died. He wanted something more painful. Matthew was killed by an axe and a spear. Andrew was bound to a cross. Simon was crucified. Jude was shot with arrows and then crucified. Oh, and John, the disciple that, that didn't die as a result of being martyred or didn't die because of his faith, here's what they did to John. They actually boiled him alive and it didn't kill him. Now listen to me. If you and I are one of the disciples and we've made this story up, it's some fictional thing that we decided to make up over a weekend, right? So we can make people feel better about their afterlife. If we made it all up, I'm going to recant this story and tell you that I'm lying the moment they break out the McDonald's french fry machine and start dipping me into it, right? There's no chance that I'm going to hold tight to this story if I'm lying about it whenever I'm getting boiled alive. But they didn't. None of them did. In fact, all of them were glad to be able to die for this message. That's how much they believed in a resurrected Jesus. So I want you to know today that you can believe in the resurrection because there were men that died for this cause. There were people that saw a resurrected Jesus. They saw his death. They saw his burial. They saw his resurrection. And as a result of it, they changed the world. That motivated them to not just live for themselves any longer, but to live for this message and this cause of Jesus. And as a result of it, it's not all that crazy that you and I would live for that very same message. So the second reason that, that Christianity is set apart from everything else is the resurrection. The third is, is, is this concept of forgiveness. The concept of forgiveness, which is a concept uh, that isn't just exclusive to Christianity, but it's one of our core tenets of our faith that helps us to understand that, man, I've been forgiven so I should forgive as well. Romans chapter 8 says this, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, that, that you and I aren't condemned as a result of our sins. In fact, 1 John 1, 9 says, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That God wants to cleanse you and I from all of our wickedness, from all of our unrighteous, from all of our unrighteous ways. It's kind of like this. I want to close with this story it's, uh, it's as if you and I were on trial for something. Let's pretend like uh, you and I were on trial for something that, uh, that we totally deserve. Maybe we had robbed a bank or we stole something. And, and whatever it was, it was bad enough that you and I would deserve the death penalty. So the judge uh, declares us guilty, slams his gavel down, tells us that, uh, that, that our life is pretty much over. They put handcuffs on us and they begin to walk us out of the room. And the judge actually stops um, and, says, and takes his robe off and comes off of his bench and comes to us and says, hey, I'll, I'll take this for you. I'm going to take your death sentence and you're going to walk away a free person and I'm going to take on all of your guilt. And what is distinct about Christianity is that Christianity is the only worldwide religion that would say that God came for us, that he came to rescue us, to take our place, to be our substitute so that we didn't have to experience guilt, so that we didn't have to experience condemnation, so that we didn't have to experience shame, and so that we don't have to experience an eternity separated from this God who loves us. That is what God did with Jesus. There's this concept of forgiveness that sets Christianity apart from every other worldwide religion. So I wonder today, have you accepted that forgiveness? Do you understand that Jesus really is the only way to God? And what I want to tell you today, I wanna to beg you to see this, that he is not just a way, he's the only way. So I wonder today if you'd be willing to say yes to making Jesus the Lord of your life. For you to say yes to saying, man, I know and I accept today that God, that, that I'm a sinner, that, I, that I've done some things in my life that I feel guilty about, that I feel ashamed of. And today, for the first time, I believe that God sent his only son for me to die in my place, to be, to be my substitute. That God took off his robe and said, I'm, I'm yours. I'm, I'm going to come and die in your place. And then would you be willing today to confess and say, God, I, I'm confessing today for you and only you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. So let's pray together right now. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes? If, if you need to pray this prayer today and say yes to making Jesus the Lord of your life, you'd pray a prayer like this. God, thank you for sending your only son for me. God, today I acknowledge 
that I've done some things in my life that I'm not proud of. I've blown it more times than I can count. And God, today I believe that you sent your only son for all my mistakes, for all my hurts, for all my habits, for all my hangups. God, I know that you sent your son for that. And today, God, I confess you and only you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. God, today I, I believe that your son Jesus was not only a way, but he is the way to you. And so, God, I thank you that he came for me. Thank you for loving me and making me a Christian, saving me from my sins. It's in Jesus' name that we pray all of this. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, let me be the very first to congratulate you and just say, man, yay, God, that's incredible, that's awesome. There's a party in heaven happening right now. And we would love to be able to celebrate with you. So if you could just text the word yes to this phone number, 636-336-2475. That's 636-336-2475. Man, I want to celebrate with you uh, and be able to give you some resources to help you on some next steps on your journey. Thank you so much for watching online today. Uh, man, I think it's just critical and important that we're growing on our spiritual journey. And so thank you so much for watching online. I hope that you can check us out next week. Maybe you can even come in person sometime. We have three uh, in-person services every single Sunday morning, 8.30, 9.45, and 11 o'clock. I can't wait to meet you soon in person. I hope you have an awesome week, and we'll talk real soon. Thanks.
Thank you so much again for joining us today. We hope that you can take a next step in your walk with Christ. Here at Grace River, we worship in three ways. Through singing, through the hearing of God's word, and through giving back to the God who's given us everything. If you'd like to give today, you can do so by texting Grace River to the number on the screen. I also wanna personally invite you to one of our in-person services on a Sunday morning. We have service at 8.30, 9.45, and 11, and we have a seat saved just for you. So come check us out. We hope you have a great week.